Warning. This experiment should be performed with adequate ventilation to prevent the buildup of explosive hydrogen gas. Copper sulfate and sulfuric acid are toxic and corrosive. Wear gloves when handling them. Greetings fellow nerds. In a previous video I made sulfuric acid using a complicated sulfur dioxide and oxidizing liquid setup. Well, pretty quick, it was a little difficult to build. Then in another video, I showed how to convert sulfuric acid into copper sulfate. But copper sulfate can easily be purchased in large quantities. So the question is, can copper sulfate be converted back into copper metal and sulfuric acid? It can. And in this video, we'll show how to do that based on electrochemistry. First, we'll need the carbon electrodes we obtained previously from batteries. Attach and tape on a wire to the top of the electrode so you can connect it to a power source. Now make a solution of copper sulfate. The stronger the better. And place in the bottom a copper electrode. Attach the copper electrode to the negative terminal of your battery or power supply. Attach the carbon electrode to the positive terminal and suspend it above the copper electrode. The electric current causes the copper ions to deposit out as copper metal at the copper electrode. The water is split at the carbon electrode, liberating oxygen that bubbles out. The leftover hydrogen ions combine with the leftover sulfate to form sulfuric acid. I'm using a 6 volt battery, but a better method is if you can use a power supply to adjust the current and find a current level that minimizes erosion of the carbon electrode. As you can see here, the carbon electrode is eroding terribly and filling the solution with particles. The length of time for conversion depends on the current applied, the clomic efficiency, and the moles of copper sulfate in the solution. Anyway, after about an hour, I stopped mine and the next step is to filter out the suspended particles. As you can see here, I stopped it short, so it's not fully converted. It will have to be put back through the cycle until it's clear. Well, that's going. I'm going to make another batch, but this time using a much better platinum electrode. Okay, it's actually a platinum co-titanium electrode, but it's still the platinum that's doing all the work. Once again, we insert the electrodes into a copper sulfate solution with a platinum electrode on top with a positive power connection and the copper electrode at the bottom with a negative power connection. Turning on the current now. Since the platinum dissolves extremely slowly, we can actually see the chemistry in progress. The blue copper ions are being played out of the solution and onto the copper electrode as a mass of spongy copper. The solution is getting lighter as it's converted to sulfuric acid. Now before you ask, these two electrodes are the best electrodes for this process and other electrodes work terribly. In fact, many of them won't produce any acid at all. You can try them, but it'll probably fail horribly. Now I'm told lead dioxide anodes also work, but I haven't yet made one at the time I made this video. Anyway, the conversion is now done. As you can see, we now have a solution of clear dilute sulfuric acid with bits of copper. Just filter off the copper and, similar to our previous video, boil down the dilute acid to concentrate it. It can be tested by mixing with sugar and seeing if it turns to carbon. So there we made sulfuric acid by using a copper sulfate solution and electrochemistry. Although it's a lot slower, it's a lot easier to do than the metabisulfite method. We'll continue to explore other ways of making sulfuric acid in upcoming videos. So please subscribe, rate, and comment.